she started the knowledge and then you, you had some appearances at 28 days yes and then you got the points that you needed to yeah. bring it down to like every 14 days yes and you usually had two appearances of that and what they did once you pass that they could view your, your wreck but then you do the suburbs afterwards yes yeah. Got a couple of appearances you know um can't think of it. Just, I hated it because it didn't. Like so you Camden said quite... town going to Barnet or something like that. Yeah. And you'd have to know all the street names in. Well, roughly, yeah. There was a lot of big, big names, you know, like Marble Arch of Edgware, you know, you know, Edgware Road and about two other words, and that, that, that was it. You were there. I remember you used to call them rhubarbs. Oh, did that, I imagine that? No, that was Ham, they called Hampstead Garden Suburb. <laughs> Hampstead Garden Suburb, they used to call that rhubarb. <laughs> so, I, and then what happened? Was there, like, was there one appearance where you knew it was the last one? Or yes. did you? Or did they just suddenly turn around and say you've done it? Yes. So you knew there'd be like one more? No, you knew you, 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 you had done it all. And if you blew that one, you know there'd be another one. You'd come back in a fortnight's time. God, and then what happens? Do they, do they just give you like a piece of paper then, or? Yeah. I think they you've had to pay half a crown for your badge or something. Um, pay for the postage for them to send it to you. That was. That. And and that's when you get the green badge. Yes. Now, but I've lost. I lost two of them. My first one was one two eight five seven. That's the one they gave me. <laughs> you still remember it? No. Well, it's just such an ordeal you go through. You see, fellas, when you first went up there, they got nice suits on, nice polished shoes. But after eighteen months, your suit was all polished at the elbows. <laughs> you could see your shoes worn down, and the frayed shirt because you got no money. <laughs> so you had to dress up for the appearance oh yeah yeah. yeah you still do oh really yeah no if you lost it you had to go to the police station yeah. fill out a form yeah. and then they gave you another sort of told it, uh, a form just in case you got stopped by the police yeah and then once you've so once you've got your green badge yeah. how how does the taxi work do you, do you back then did you have to buy it or rent it no. or oh, it was called on, on the flat and you had it for a week uh, I can't remember how it must have been about £13 for the week and you put the, your own diesel in or you could have it as, uh, on what they call on the clock on those metres that you do a percentage you know you you give the owner seventy percent, no sixty percent. You kept forty percent and all your tips, but usually the cab went in on the end of the day or end of the night when you finished. Either you call half on the plate, you could share it with somebody, but it, that more or less everybody went on the uh, on the f full flat. Why they call it that, I don't know, but you could keep it. Use it as your own for your own use as well, which is quite handy. Yeah. And you, um, where was that? Is it in town somewhere? Yeah, it was off of um, West End Lane. Oh right, the garage there. I mean, it's, yeah, it's two houses now. Yeah. <laughs> it's a luxury block, isn't it? Yeah. But back then, it was uh, mechanical meters. Yeah. Yeah, and when they put fares up, they'd have to. Oh, You'd have to drive in, wouldn't you? They'd have to physically. I'd have a new meter, and you sometimes have to um, wait for the cab to go overhaul because they just couldn't eat, alter all these mechanical meters at once. It used to be like a, I remember there used to be like a, a thing in the back that explained the fares, yeah. but there was another thing for when the fares went up that would convert. What's on the meter with the new... Oh, we used to call them bingo cards. <laughs> and it caused more ructions and everything. People, you know, 
Well, because you've got to explain that the yeah. fare on the meter isn't. Got this big place here, <laughs> and the more intelligent the people, the less ones that could work. They ones who couldn't work it out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, funny. And the, yeah, that was the other thing that, that I remembered. The um, the overhauls they sounded just as stressful as the oh, as the yeah. knowledge because every year it's not like an MOT. It's like a proper. They go through everything, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they go to have it steam cleaned first, and then just everything needed doing. Because they could fail you on, yeah, um, like silly stuff. Yeah, if, if, if the cigarette thing was full up. <laughs> Another thing I used to get in the st- mum used to, have to you get the state I used to get in because it meant if, you know if, if your cab had failed it meant another couple of days off of work sometimes it's a good thing sometimes it's a bad thing yeah I thought it was a good thing because it's a bit like your body if something's not slightly right you let it go it gets worse and wor- worse I remember you had the, um, the hubcaps you had a hubcap syndicate where you, oh, no, right. you, you, yeah. you and three mates each yeah. owned a, hub, a brand new hubcat. Yes. So when one of you went for overhaul, yeah, th- we had as had um, yeah, we put all the new hubcaps on, them, so it looked nice. Uh, one garage end of the street, a taxi fleet, he had bumpers, overhaul bumpers. <laughs> you would take bumpers off the. I taxi and put these new ones on, take it up. When it came back, put the old bumpers back on again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you were on the flat for a bit, so yeah. which is like renting a renting yeah. a taxi. Yeah. And then, at what stage could you buy well, one? Well, it was when I got the money. Uh, mine was about nine months. It, the things they hire on the flat in those days were just clapped out. It was horrible to drive, and you know you take it in the garage and get it back for service, and it, it, the wheel, the steering wheel used to be greasy. The seats used to be, driver's seat used to be greasy. But with your own one, you know you take a bit of pride in it. So that, how did that feel when you got your first cab then? Petrified again because you just laid out one thousand two hundred and fifty pound. And you're driving around, and but, uh, after a week, it was it was whizzing around like anything. Where do you get them from? That was like one place. We yes, yeah, off of Wandsworth Bridge Road. There's a garage there. It's the only place you could get them. Yeah. But I found I had a manual to start with, and, and it, the gearbox was so. Hard. You needed to sort of have a diver's boot on to change gear and get it in gear. Of course, they had the monopoly; they couldn't care less. <laughs> was that uh, was that Lou Fifty Two P? No. Was he to... a, 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 it was AGP three four three G. What model was it? Was what were yeah, they called? FX Four. An FX Four. Yeah. And and then when you when you passed, how did was how did the the radio circuits work? Because c- could you drive a cab without being on a? Circuit? Oh yeah, when I first started, yeah, that that was you know self self indulgement. You know, if you wanted to be, but I wanted to be on the radio because people, you know, the mini cabs were coming in and people wanted to pick you up at your door. They didn't want to stand in the street in the rain and yeah. Women complaining about their hair, and you had um, so you had f- what four radio circuits in London? Was there was Lords? No, there was two. Oh, it was there two to start with? Yeah. When I was there, it was just two people had a row with each other for one circuit, and uh, one went one way, and the other went. Oh, the so other there way. was just one radio circuit. Yeah. Which I started at <laughs> Levy's, you know, with that big garage at the end of York Way. It was started there. Wh- which end of York Way? As you just come in from King, you, you know, Euston Road, on the right, there's a big, big place there. I mean, I used to call it's called Diesel Up. Every two nights, you know, you'd fill up with diesel. Oh, 
can't remember. It's like a courtyard. Yeah. So it's now it's all now all shops and coffee shops, shops now. Yeah, yeah. But it used to be like this muse, cobbled yeah. muse, yeah. that you go in to get your dove, yeah. your diesel. And you give the fellow who filled it up a couple of bob and he checked your water and your battery. But they had a radio circuit there, a, you know, radio... Yeah, because he had some premises there where you went downstairs and I think this fellow Levy who had been to America and seen it and tried to start it up at... there, but then someone else, I can't remember names of the fellas took it over and moved up Pentonville Road and started it there. So then, and was that going before you became a driver? You know, there was already a radio circuit. Yes, yeah. And then, so then, <laughs> so then they split. Yes. B- before your time. Yeah. And one was called Mount View. Mount View, yeah. And one was called Lords. Yes. That's because of, that was the phone number. Right, that's the, the name of the exchange yes. in London. Right, so was, where was Mount View based? Right at the top of Highgate Hill, in one of those flats there. Okay. And um, Lord's was in... In Pentonville Road. Pentonville Road. Yeah. So when you phone up for a cab, you'd either phone that number or, or, the other or your one. number, yeah. Lord's. And, um, yeah. and then... <laughs> so then... When did you join Lord's? Thanks for watching. The chat continues on the link on screen here or in the description. And thanks again for showing your love with a thumbs up or subscribe by clicking on my face or the button below. Now here's the next part of the chat with my dad.